Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, we are doing part two of the Eva top and dress sew along. First, we'll talk about measuring yourself and selecting a size. And then we'll print out the pattern and I'll show you two different methods for cutting out the rectangular pieces of your sewing pattern. And finally, you'll cut out all the pattern pieces and interfacing. Let's get started. To take your measurements, you'll want to use a flexible measuring tape. So the two most important measurements for this pattern are the bust and the upper bust. So let's start with the upper bust. So I just try to have kind of a neutral breathing position when I take this measurement. And this will help us determine the cup size that we want to use. So make a note of your upper bust and then go down to the full bust. When you take this measurement, you want to try to have the measuring tape be level to the ground and to be around the fullest part of the bust. So don't pull it too tight or let it fall down. Just have it in a really comfortable position. And then if you want, you can also measure your waist and your hips. The pattern is very loose fitting in the waist and the hips. So it's good to be aware of those measurements, but they are not as essential as the bust and upper bust. So when you get your pattern, you'll download the zip file. And there are two PDFs in that first file, the contents and the instructions. To select our size, we'll want to go over to instructions. And if we go down to page two, we can see that we have all the contents of our instruction booklet right here. The text that's in blue with an underline is a hyperlink. So if we click on one of these, it'll take us right to that page. So let's go to body measurements. And I'm going to zoom in here. You can actually zoom in quite a lot. All right, now that we're at our body measurements, you wanna grab the measurements that you just took and find your upper bust. And you wanna choose the number that you are closest to. If you are right in between two of these numbers, for example, if you're a 38 inch upper bust, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. You can choose either one and you might want to make a muslin or two just to figure out which size is the best fit for you. So let's do an example where our upper bust is 37 inches. So we're gonna to go to this column and I'm highlighting 37 inches. And then you wanna look at your full bust and let's say that our full bust is 40 inches. So I'm going to go down this column and find the number that is closest to 40 inches. And that is going to be our CD cup. So sometimes you will want to round up, sometimes you'll want to round down. Just choose the one that is closest to your measurements. So for this example, we will make a size 14 in the CD cup. Now the pattern files are organized with the cup size in the name. So if we're going to print at home, we will open this file Eva CD cup print at home. If you are printing an A0 file, you can print either the version with, that has an AB cup and a CD or the CD and the EF. Likewise, for the US copy shop or the projector files, you would choose the file that has your cup size. So here I have the print at home file open in Acrobat Reader and you want to look at this portion in the top left and make sure that you have the right cup size. Right here it'll say A, B, C, D, or E, F. Then go over to the left and click the little arrow and then click this layer symbol. And out we will have all the layers in the file. Alternately, we go to View, Show Hide, Navigation Panes, and then Layers. Now, to get just the size or sizes we want, you click on the little eyeball that's next to the size you don't want. So when you click the eyeball, it goes away and it means that it's not visible anymore. 
So if we click through, we can see that I only have one size now visible. There might be some pages like this one that don't have any image on it. And when I print, I can decide not to print this page. So I'll make a note that I don't need page five. I'm still going to print page one so that I get this test square to make sure that everything is the correct scale. So I will go to file, print, and then this is my printer. I've also found that I want to make sure I have the right printer selected in page setup and printer because right here you can see that it might not print the whole image. So I will click page setup. Yes. And then instead of any printer, I'm selecting my printer. Okay. And we can see that this white area is now bigger and it's going to print the entire image. And then I don't want to print page five, so I will just adjust the number of pages. So printing pages one to four and six to eight. And then I want it to be actual size. You could also do custom scale at 100%, but you do not want to do fit or shrink oversized pages. If we click those, that looks the same, but fit makes it 110% and that is going to be too big. So let's do actual size. It's also not a bad idea to check your printer settings. Sometimes mine end up being two-sided and I don't want that. Um, I'm gonna click black and white because this document's all black and white. Normal quality is fine, but I could probably go down to draft, um, save a little bit of ink but we'll just do normal and then select print and then hit print again and it'll go to the printer. So when you're ready to cut out your pattern, you'll first want to go to the cutting list worksheets and there is a different worksheet for each view of the pattern. On page seven, we have the crop top, page eight is the peplum and page nine is the sundress. Immediately after those pages, you will find the charts that have the dimensions for our rectangular pieces. Page 10 has those pieces in inches, and page 11 has them in centimeters. And here in the chart, each of the bigger rows is a pattern piece. So here we have our center back bodice, and the top row is our width, and the bottom is the height. So you can just go down this column and record all the numbers on your worksheet. I recommend using a pencil just in case you want to make any adjustments. One option for the rectangular pattern pieces is to make them out of tracing paper or newsprint, whatever you have on hand. This is a great option if you plan on reusing the pattern over and over again and you like working with paper patterns. One simple way to measure out these pattern pieces, especially if you have tracing paper or tissue paper, is to use your cutting mat and use the grid and the rulers on your cutting mat. So I just wanna start by making a clean line on the edge. So I'm starting with the center back bodice and I've marked 10 inches this way and eight and a quarter this way. Let's just go ahead and draw that line, bring it down here and then meet up with our 10 inch and make sure to label your pattern pieces. And it's also helpful to add in a green line. The side back bodice piece is the same height so I can actually just use this same line that I used before. And then you can use a blade or scissors to cut these out. Next, let's cut out this back facing. And for this one, my pattern piece is smaller than my ruler. So I'm just putting my ruler down and measuring out the size of the pattern piece and I'm going to cut. So instead of drawing it first, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out. Here's method two for cutting out the rectangular pattern pieces. And this is actually not 
really cutting it all. We're going to tear the fabric. And there are some benefits and some drawbacks to tearing your fabric. So first off, when you tear your fabric, it's really easy to do and it's going to ensure that it is torn or cut right along the grain line. So you might have heard the advice, if your fabric does not have an edge that is cut on the grain, you can tear it and then you know that that edge is on the grain. That said, sometimes in the process of tearing your fabric, it's going to warp a little bit. So just watch out for that and you might need to kind of pull it back into a rectangle shape. So when you're thinking about tearing your fabric, you can tear it lengthwise or widthwise. And generally I'm going to tear it widthwise so I can get some nice long strips. One thing to be careful of is that as you're tearing it, it's going to be easiest to just tear all the way through and tear a whole strip off of the length. But sometimes it's going to be a longer strip than you need. So this could be a little bit wasteful, or you can just go with that length and use it to your advantage. And that's kind of the nice thing about doing these ruffled pieces for the skirt or the peplum. So in the pattern, there's a recommended length for the skirt and the peplum and everything, and then it's gathered. And you can really adjust that depending on the width of your fabric and what works best for you. So I'm making a peplum top from this fabric. And what I wanna do first is make a tear to get a nice straight edge. I'm gonna start with this other edge. On the other side of the fabric, I cut out my bodice and the bias tape. So that one's not as even, but let's start here. And to get the tear started, I'm just going to clip in here. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this first tear just about an inch, and this is going to give me a nice straight edge. Oh, okay. So this is what happens sometimes. I can see that I'm not gonna be able to go all the way through the fabric. So we're going to cut in a little deeper. So as I said, the width of your fabric is not always gonna be cut straight to the grain. So let's just try another inch. And then you just take these two pieces. Okay. I think we're going, this I think is gonna work. We're gonna get all the way down. And then as you get to your selvage, you usually need to cut it again. Um, you usually can't tear through the selvage. So that's why you start with a cut and end with a cut. So here you can see this edge is a little bit frayed and even a little bit warped. So you might want to trim this and iron it or just pull it a little bit to get it straight again. So that's the main drawback of tearing is that your edge is gonna be a little bit warped. So you could kind of pull it or use your iron. So now I have a nice straight edge. So for my peplum top, the pattern recommends two pieces that are 10 inches high by 33 inches wide. And my fabric is 60 inches wide. So it would be really easy for me to cut two pieces that are 10 by 30, because I can tear off one strip that's 10 inches long and then cut it in two. And I think I'm gonna do this so that I save fabric. And because it's the gathers, it's not going to make a huge difference. Likewise, if your fabric was longer, you could probably cut one strip, cut it in half, and just have two pieces that are a little bit longer than the pattern recommends. This is an area where you can really play around. Now that you have the rectangles cut out, use traditional cutting methods to cut out the front bodice and the front facing. Then cut out the inner facing and attach the inner facing to the front facing and the back facing. 
All right, I've gone through my list and cut everything out and I've prepped everything for sewing. I have my bodice pattern piece, the facings, and I have interfaced both the back facing and the front facing. And then I have my side back bodice rectangles. I have finished what's going to be the side seam on the side back bodice. I have my center back bodice, two pockets, and I went ahead and finished every edge of my pockets. And then I have my skirt and my peplum. And for both of these, I went ahead and finished the side seam. I hope that you found this video helpful. There's a link in the show notes to get your own copy of the pattern and make sure to like and subscribe so that you get notified of our next video when we start sewing together the bodice. Happy sewing.